Okay, <laughs> sorry about the slightly clickbaity title, but seriously, this is what the dress looks like. So, welcome back. I've come back after a bit of a, I'd like to say I've had a break, but I haven't, <laughs> I've been doing stuff. I've got things going on. Anyway, this is the dress in question. This is what it looks like from the front. Dottie is doing a sterling job modeling it for me. No, I haven't washed it or ironed it since the accident happened because I didn't want to make it any worse. So that is right at the, it's literally, yeah, it probably is on the fullest part or maybe when you sit down. It's about six inches long and you can see, you can see how it's all pulling down the hem. So of course I can fix it. It's not unfixable at all. It's happened in the best possible place well, on a seam. It's happened on a seam, which is really, really good. It has kind of ripped up into the fabric a little bit, but it is totally repairable. In the end, I will be able to hide it in the back seam. Now, here's my dilemma. If I mend this, stitch it all back together, make it so you never know it's been there. One, I'm taking out fabric. Two, who's say it's not gonna happen again? Of course it's gonna happen again, because it will be even smaller around that bit. What I need to do is come up with a plan of how I can repair this, but make it bigger. I'm just gonna do a little quick outline of the back. We have a great big hill about here. So that's the stress point there. I can literally lay the garment flat and mark that stress point on the two side seams. So I will do that. Then I am going to redo this seam by actually cutting it all the way down and I pr probably will cut out the entire seam where the damage is and all that sort of thing and then redo it. I might need to unpick a little bit of the waistband. So first things first, I need to repair back centre seam and I'll show you how I do that while I'm doing it. I'll actually show you how I cut it out, remake it completely and make it look all beautiful and gorgeous. So then how are we going to put extra fabric in it? Okay, how is that going to work? How is that going to be a thing? Well, I thought I might be able to get some linen a similar colour. Um, I do use a really good uh, fabric mill in London who do a gorgeous selection of linens and stuff. And when I looked on their website, oh, I couldn't find anything that was remotely close. So I thought, I know, if, it, if you can't get it close, make it like a bit contrasty. What I have is this. It's a dark teal. And whereas the other one is maybe slightly more blue i don't know the dress the dress is still on dotty in the other room so i can't show you the two of them together however trust me these are different colors but i think they're similar enough and i think they are different enough i know it sounds stupid to work so i bought i think i bought a meter of this but look at the quality of this one right this has been through the machine already it's a very similar weight but it's just this is gorgeous if the dress had been made out of this it wouldn't have happened. It's like, it's a closer weave. It's just basically, it's a better quality linen, which is really nice to know. I definitely will, if I, if I want to make any more linen clothes, I know where to get them from. I have an extra bit of linen. So what am I going to do without making it look an absolute disaster? So what I'm going to try and do, no, what I am going to do, I'm not going to try, this is going to be a success, I mean, positive thinking, is I am going to open these side seams. And I'm going to open them to probably just a little bit past that stress point where the rip is. And then I am going to insert a gore. And if you've done any dressmaking, you know what one of those is. If you haven't done any dressmaking, a gore is an extra piece that is put in, usually triangular, to make it bigger. And they, this is a technique that's been used for probably about a thousand years. So we just need to cut a triangular panel and then put a decent seam allowance on it like that. There'll have to be some sort of hem as well on the bottom. I need to just cut two of those. And then I'm literally gonna stitch in one side and then stitch in the other side and then make a hem. And then I will end up with the skirt that's got more movement in it and I think this is the best solution. So that's my plan and I'm going to show you how to do it. I brought the dress in. This is the colour of the dress and this is the colour of the linen that I ordered. So you can see this one's considerably darker than this one. So sometimes to think about what colour to mend something, you can look at the garment itself to see what colour thread is on it, but I've used a cotton thread and I think it was more this colour. 
maybe a shade or two darker than this but then with the washing because this has been washed several times and obviously it's linen so it will leach a little bit of dye into the thread it looks the thread looks darker than the garment however if you look on the seam you can see the seam is darker too you can see there's a dark just along there so when doing anything like this where you've got an area of damage and I've already said that I couldn't put it through the washing machine because I didn't want to make it worse I need to iron it and make it as flat and as true to what it would be when I was wearing it as possible. So I am about to do some ironing on my big ironing board. It's very exciting. The reason why I'm using the big ironing board is because it's, you see how long my skirt is? It's really long. Because I want it to give some support to the whole part of the skirt and the, the dress and everything. So what I'm doing here, which you can't see because the iron's in the way, I don't think is I'm trying to get the hem to curve round properly because obviously it curves around the waist as well. So that's curving round and then I need to push all this in together and give it an iron. I'm just using it on cotton and linen. I'm not using any steam or anything like that. And then on this part, I'm actually pushing that bit back under there. What I'm hoping is I'll be able to pull it over nicely enough. And you can see how that's come back together pretty well. So I think we'll be okay. I might not even have to open out the whole seam. Now I've pushed it back, it's not, not nearly as bad as I thought it was. So that's good. So once it's off of here, I need to press it this way so that I can pin it and just do a final assessment of the damage to decide which way I'm going to do it. But that is not bad at all. So you can see that it's, it's actually pulled through on the other side of the seam as well. So I think I will be able to actually start up here somewhere as just stitch a straight stitch on the machine coming all the way past the damage and all the way down to here. And what I'll do is I will pin that first to hold it all in place because you can see even just laying it on here it's got a tendency to like pull in and out and everything and then when I've stitched that first straight line I will be checking to make sure I've caught all of the damage and then also while I'm pinning I will be checking on both sides to make sure I'm lifting all that damage back into the seam allowance like that um, so I, I'll do that first and then I will zigzag it um, overcast it with a quite close in stitch length but quite wide in stitch width and then the last thing I'll do is I will actually stitch from much much higher up another line of straight sewing running stitch whatever it is on the machine all the way inside of that new seam allowance that I've created and it just means you've got several parts that can give it a bit of stability but fingers crossed we are going to remove the stress problem. Before I do that bit I must just remember to measure where the stress part is. So what I've done here is this is the side seam underarm, this is the centre back which remember that's where the damage is, is on the centre back seam. So if I match those two points up I bring the side seam ignoring the pocket if possible. Oh, that's so annoying. It's right on the pocket, look at that. So the stress part is about, what is that, about an inch, quite a lot higher than the pocket. That's okay. Oh my God, look at this, the pocket's coming undone as well. Okay, right, so I'm just gonna mark this for now and we'll worry about the next bit. One, one bit's got easier, one bit's got a little bit more difficult, but it's not the end of the world, it's fine, we can do this. So I'm just gonna put, remember how I use um, different colored pins to indicate stuff? So I'm just gonna put a red glass head pin in here and I'm going to stitch it through rather than just push it in. And then I'm just gonna repeat the same thing on the other side seam, just match up the damage to that so that we know how high to cut into the dress. Okay, I wasn't gonna show you me doing it again, but <laughs> this just goes to show why I hardly ever buy clothes, okay. So I'm matching up this side seam with the center back. This is the center back closest to me now. Okay, there's the pocket. Okay, all the way along here. Right, you can see I'm being completely fair about this, yeah? Yeah, you would say I am not doing anything. Right, there's the pocket. <laughs> there's the end of the pocket. There's the damage. So what does that tell us? It tells us that either the pockets are the wrong size, or they've been, they're different sizes, or they've not been cut both on the grain, or they're just one's higher than the other, so more difficult on one side. 
Well, I suppose that's something. I'll take that as a win. There's the pocket. Pocket, 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 pocket. This is where the pin's going, just here. So I had to film that. Right, so I've got the centre back seam facing me now. This is what we ironed. And I am actually going to line it up. So you'll see this bit sort of curved over a bit. That's because it's all pulled out of shape. So you just need to pull that in. So I'm going to start trying to get this piece true to the grain before I do any pinning up here. So I'm just going to slide some pins a little bit further down just to hold that in place. That's going to hold all the fabric in place now. If it's wrong, just take it out and start again, but I think that's okay. And then we'll just check the other side. Yeah, I think I think that's all right too. There's actually a little bit of a tear, but I think that's okay. I'm looking at the grain of the fabric and the line that is damaged is about there. So I want to come at least two threads into the fabric. I know it looks like an awful lot. It really isn't. It, we're talking about half an inch. But this dress has not been stitched on true to the grain anyway. Up here, it's probably on that line. Here, I, I'm not, I don't know if that's shaping. It's not a fitted skirt anyway. I'm not going to get into the realms of <laughs> someone else has designed it. I'm going to start mending it probably about there, which is about two inches above the damage. But weirdly, that's where the thread is. That's where it goes. So I'm just going to follow that thread line. I think that's the best thing to do. So we're just coming up to the end of the damage here. So I have put that pin right on that thread. So that is straight. And this is the line that we ironed when we were just ironing it into position. And that will end up being just two threads off of this seam. There's quite a lot of, can you see where it looks like quite satiny there? That's because it's pulled. So we need to stitch down probably to about here. So I shall carry on pinning just to mark it. And then here, where that green one is, I think we need to extend that to there just to get it more on the sort of right line. You know, a bit like when you do darts, if you've ever done darts. So I'm just going to put a couple of pins and just extend it up there. Just try and make it as smooth as possible. I'm going to leave those yellow pins in there just for the moment because they'll help support all of this fraying fabric. We don't want that to move. And I'm just checking the back to make sure those pins are going through past the damage and they are. So I've already found my bobbin. It's the same colour top and bottom. I'm pointing that out because I don't always use the same colour top and bottom. But at the moment for this we are. So I've got it just on standard running stitch. I think it probably needs to be a little bit of a shorter stitch. So I'm just taking it down to two. And then I'm starting in the original seam up here. So where they've done two lines of stitching as well. I'm sort of somewhere in the middle of that and I'm going to do forwards and then reverse and then forwards again and then start stitching. And then before I take out the yellow pins, I'm just gonna check the back and make sure I've gone through all the damage. And I have, there's one little bit here where it's just wandering off a little bit. Let me just have a look here. Just there. It would probably hold it, but I don't want to chance it. So I'm starting in the seam allowance to do the forwards and back and then I'll start coming out on the straight line. Right, I mean we really were talking the tiniest little bit there. And then I think I might run my second straight stitch through. I think we'll trim this off first actually. So I'm just gonna take off the old sewing part as best I can. And then I'm gonna set it for a zigzag to overcast it. I'm gonna start up here. And the reason why I decided to do this, the first bit of zigzag or overcasting before I did the second line was I suddenly thought if I do that first and then stitch the second line of running stitch over the top, it will make it a lot more secure. I've done the overcasting. This is the bit where all the damage was. I think I might leave that overcasting at that. I don't think I want to do another pass over because it makes it very hard. Back to a straight stitch. And then this time we're going to stitch just slightly on the inside. So I'm stitching about two threads in from that first line of stitching. Apart from the area that I didn't do I didn't catch it quite enough on the first time. So I've literally, my threads have just crossed like that. I've literally come across to do it and now I'm on the, slightly on the outside. If I show you one here. I came down here and then I, oh, oh there it is there. 
I crossed over and I came out and I was actually on the outside. Then I stayed on the outside all the way down there and then I crossed over and I went back. In a moment of truth, before we do anything else, we should inspect this seam. Obviously I'll iron it, but you can't you can't see my stitching. Actually my stitching's more um seems smaller than theirs. There's my stitching that you can't see, and there's the stitching that was there before. So you can see that even that colour grey is really not a problem. <laughs> so that's part one done. Part two, unpicking. Just before I start unpicking this, I'm looking at it and thinking, do I really want to unpick this? <laughs> yes, I do. I am going to measure how long it is. So there's the red pin. It probably needs to be about 32 in total to add in a little bit of hemness. So I'm going to write that down somewhere. That is 32 inches, including seam allowance. There we go, it's written down now. So we're measuring that because that's, we need to know how long that panel's going to be, and it's easier to measure it while it's still stitched together, rather than when it's not. And if it looks very bright, it's because I've got my magnifying glass, because I don't want to snip through it by mistake. So the first thing I need to do is just try and find where this hem is stitched. Actually, 10 out of 10 to them for matching the thread to the fabric. We've all seen how easy that was. <laughs> right, we we only we don't need to undo much more than that, just I only want it to undo that bit. Okay, quick update. I have unpicked um, both sides. So this was the side with the dodgy pocket and I have also pressed what's left of the seams uh, flat again, ready for re -sewing. This is the dodgy pocket, can you see there's a stitch line there? It's kind of a weird thing there. This is the pocket that came out. I unpicked it completely. This is not me, that's what it was like stitched in. If, if you wanted to, I'm happy to just have one pocket, it's fine to just have one pocket. Very, very quick how you would put it right. First of all, iron it. Second of all, cut off the excess that you don't need so that both sides are the same. And pick around the outside, decide where you want to put it, stitch one side on one bit, one bit and one side on the other bit, so you've got two separate flappy bits but in exactly the same place, and then stitch down and around the outside of the pocket and then stitch down, and that's how you would put the pocket back in. I think it's just easier to put in the gore on this side and then stitch this up straight and hope that it stitches up straight. The other thing I need to do is I haven't taken the red pin out because when I was unpicking all this and deciding on how to do the hem, I actually want to make sure that this in this piece and the gourd piece are the same except half an inch longer at the top because that'll be the seam allowance at the top. There'll be like a little flat bit. So I had allowed 32 inches. I need to re-measure the other side because it's going to be less than that and it needs to be exact now. So I've been having a think about different shapes and I suddenly thought you could actually do like the Lagen look thing. If you don't want to work out, you know, this how to get the curve on the hem and, and all of that. The, the super, super easy way would be to literally cut a rectangle, two, two rectangles out. So you need one to go on one side. So the only measurement you really need to worry about is the length of it and then one to go on the other side. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch down here on both sides and then we're gonna stitch it across there and then down there. And then it, what it will do is it will drape. Now I'm not going to do that to my dress but I have cut out some fabric out of um, a bit of white sheet that I'll pin on to one side to show you what it looks like and then this one is almost impossible to do on this dress because it's so long, the handkerchief hem, as that would be trailing on the floor. I mean you could have like a really, really slight point like that if you wanted to and that would make it slightly easier to finish the hem but to be honest I, I don't have any problems doing the, the curved hem and I, I don't mind if it's slightly too curved. So this is the dress on dotty. So you could pin in a rectangle. This would look way better obviously if it was out of linen. It would actually look really really good and it's only pinned so you don't get any crisp edges at all. So if you did the rectangle then stitched it into the side seam there and across. The only measurement you've got to worry about really is that length there. The other thing you'd have to do is once it was on is just cut across the bottom and sort of like a triangle shape that bit. 
so it wasn't draping on the floor. So that's the rectangle method. So when you've finished having your existential crisis about how high up the uh, side seam you're going to unpick and whether or not you're going to take out the other pocket completely, then come back to reality. I just got a bit carried away with the perfectionism of it. I really don't need to worry about trying to make it right at this point. It isn't right. I am going to make it better. I have here a, a prim chalk pencil and I've already pre-washed this linen. Very important if you're going to put one fabric to another fabric, make sure they've both been washed and then you rule out any problems later on down the line. So one of the main problem would be your linen is going to shrink. So been pre-washed and I folded it into, it's down the length of the fabric because I want the grain straight and I folded it into four. So I folded it, the two outside edges here, first of all, and then I folded it in half again. And that's because I literally want to do a shape and do it once and then cut through it and leave myself with the right shape and it'll be done twice and all the rest of it. If you're gonna do more than two gourd panels, you might wanna make yourself a pattern piece. So I need to measure, I've re-measured it, it's actually 31 because I don't need as much seam allowance as I thought. So I'm gonna put a little mark here and then I'm going to measure down. I'm gonna do it down to 31. So the next thing I need to do is with a straight edge, I'm just gonna Make sure this is true. Mark on a little bit of a line there. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna do the same. I'm actually gonna continue this out, ready for cutting in a minute, although we don't need it all. So the central part, so I only need that to be an inch wide at the top because I want it to come to a point. I want it to be stitched right into the point. So if I, at the moment, what I think I'll do is I'll mark that actually three quarters of an inch across there, so it's three quarters of an inch on the back, just to make it a little bit too big, just to start with. And then I can just choose how big this panel is going to be. Now, I don't want it to be massively floofy. I just want it to give like a little bit of extra ease. So it will have a tendency to fold back round on itself. So if we make it a bit bigger, it will fold back round on itself more, but when you walk, it will move more. Okay, well, we've got lots of fabric. Why don't we be generous instead? We've measured the length here, and that was 31. That is going to be too long. We are going to have to cut this down. I'll tell you for why. As soon as you come out on an angle, you're allowing much more. So if we'd have done four inches either side, let's just put that on there. That's pretty much 31 down that outside as well. You're starting to get the curve come in. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. So that's going to make it 32 on this outside edge. So if I measure down here and then measure, so we're at 24 there, 25, 26, 30, 31. So if I put the mark on there, we know that that four inch mark starts to be the right one. So now we just need to cut that out. But before you cut it out, where we're trying to go a little bit quicker, because this is just a mending alteration thing, my best advice to you is to pin through all the layers of the fabric, just to hold it all in place while you cut it. It does have a tendency to, um, the weight of it will just pull it apart. Right, so the next thing we need to do then is cut this out. Well, I hope you were able to see what I was doing. I don't think you were. I've drawn a curve on here. So this is where I was marking across the bottom to cut it off. And this is where we were marking the line up the side and I put in the curve there. So I'm gonna cut the weight of the fabric off first. That's here. Okay, so now we're just left with the piece itself. Then I'm doing the curve. Remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. Now we're gonna do the actual pattern pieces. So I'm just gonna follow this chalk line here. So we have two, -da 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 -da. there we are, two panels. One of them will be very slightly wider than the other because it's been folded over. If you're really, really fussy, you can trim it down. So I'm just gonna give it a little trim up here. There we are, we've got two panels. So I think I'm going to mark three eighths of an inch seam allowances. And I am gonna mark that on there because it'll just give me an idea. So I think also this is the front. I'm going to put an F, so that saves me worrying about it later. So I'm just gonna go and mark on some seam allowances. I need to put the midpoint on there as well. And then of course, if there's half an inch allowed in length and width, we need to mark that down. That's the half inch mark there. We want the sewing to finish on this cross point. You just need to keep like making sure the line of the linen is 
meeting up with the line of the half inch. I marked all the seam allowances here and I've also pinned them in to be stitched on and on the side where I had to take the pocket out I've stitched that side back up and what I did was I measured from the other side and measured from the waistband down to the um, bottom of the pocket and then I did that on here and marked it and stitched it. A word about <laughs> setting gauze in. The easiest way is actually to do this when before the garment's made and that is to stitch it to one side and then it becomes like an extra piece of fabric and then you can literally just put right sides together and stitch it all along and it's done but we can't do that so the other way of doing it is to stitch from the top down on both sides but because we've marked the seam allowance and we need to be able to see that I've had to pin it in this direction so I'm going to go for the method that you shouldn't do I actually think it'll be okay which is starting at the bottom of one side stitching up to the center and then stitching all the way down to the bottom of the other side the reason why you shouldn't do that is because we're putting the old fabric which is the most movable and the most stretchy and therefore most prone to being inaccurate we're putting that to the bottom on the feed dog so that that's going to feed through faster however again seam allowance we need to know where that stitch line is so this is the only solution i can think of so i'm going to make sure that the straight stitch is on its longest yeah it is so because that'll make it easier to unpick if it goes wrong as well so i don't know if you can tell on camera but what i'm doing i'm holding this piece firm and underneath i've got my hand on the underneath fabric and i'm just gently pulling it and providing a little bit of resistance against the feed dogs so that I can just stop it feeding through Ow, a bit too quick and when I'm using this seam allowance that we drew on so I've decided I'm going to show you this entire seam just to show you what happens at that point where we need to pivot not catch through anything and then come back the other side Right, when you get close to this bit, so we're about two inches away, on the back, make sure you've pulled all of the fabric away because there is a tendency for it to do that and just catch. So make sure it's all out of the way and that we're just worrying about this side seam. Okay, now I'm pulling out, I've done the stitching method with the long pins, so I'm only pulling out part of it. So this pin actually goes right through the point where I want to stop the needle. Okay, and I'm about three stitches away. Leave the needle down, put up the presser fit, and then this bit is where it gets kind of interesting because we've got all this bulk of fabric here. We need to get that out of the way. So what I'm doing is I'm looking underneath and I'm going to push all of this fabric out there. Okay, I'm literally pivoting on the needle. And I'm going to put the weight of the dress, like the top of it up here. So you can see we've come all the way to one bit and had it straight and now we're all the way back out the other side. We've got no bulk there again, we've got no bulk under here. And at this point, just before we put down the first stitch, have a good look underneath, pull that out of the way, make sure there's nothing caught under there at all. And then start doing a couple of stitches and then I'm just going to stitch all the way down, doing exactly the same thing, providing a little bit of resistance on this layer as it goes through the feed dogs. Okay, so we've stitched it in. Doing this live on camera, has it worked? <gasps> Does it work? Does it work? Oh, look at that. Wow, that's pretty good. That's not bad at all, actually. So the only thing I need to do is on the right side, I just need to make sure there's no holes. If I wanted to, I could just stitch across there going into that. Now I know these lines are right, I could just stitch across and just continue up and do a little bit of reinforcing. I will just have a look from the outside. In fact, as gauze go, that's perfect. Can I just say this is perfect? I'm really pleased with that. And then the reason why we have a seam allowance on the inside that's quite big is that comes up and reinforces that point. Can you see? Sorry, this is all similar shades of blue. And then I'll just, um, turn that over and then just whip it down just to hold it in place just to give it a little bit of stability that'd be under there so that's that's your gourd panel in place so now we know it's perfect i can go back and finish these raw edges in exactly the same way 
that they've been finished on the rest of the garment, even though I don't really like that, but they need finishing, and that includes where I had to unpick this pocket. So I'm just gonna stitch another straight line down just inside the seam allowance here to reinforce it. And then I'll be clipping down these now, and then I'll be zigzagging to take care of all the loose ends. So this is the side with the pocket, and I wanted to show you this because I did have a little problem with it. When I had stitched it in, I had forgotten to stitch up this bit right under the pocket, so I had to do that afterwards, so it's left me with a little, tiny little pleat there. But honestly, when I'm wearing it, and now it's been pressed and everything, I don't think it will notice, and I thought, it was probably better to go with that as it was than to try and unpick it again and get it right because obviously the more I unpick it, the worse it's going to look. So I decided that I was actually okay with the pocket there anyway. It's going to sort of sit like that when I'm wearing it. Okay, I've got the dress off of Dottie and back on my cutting mat. I had a really good look at it on the dress form and it was really hanging down low on these side seams. That could be because... I didn't have the 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 dotty um, adjusted out to the right hip measurement. Obviously, I'm not as completely the same shape as dotty, <laughs> so um, I was worried about it dragging on the floor. But I, when I pulled these two bits together, when they were hanging like from the shoulders, the back one does actually dip down quite low. So I think as long as I just follow the line around here and, and make it a curve, I think it will actually be okay. Now I'm going to attempt to do that. I am going to freehand it because, I don't know, because I like living on the edge. <laughs> Come on, this is as rock and roll as it gets. I'm going to just start cutting and I'm kind of by eye keeping a similar distance except in the middle where it's kind of quite flat and I didn't get quite the right curve on that. So and then I'll start moving it out a little bit wider again and then I've got to aim for that mark there. So what I'm doing is I'm not looking where I'm cutting, I'm looking where I want to go to. That's pretty good. And then this is going to be ironed over to the same width as that and then I was going to turn over the whole of the hem anyway um, because the dress is quite long it should even the whole thing out so I will actually be stitching the whole of the hem not just these bits so I'll just show you again on the other side so this one's a little bit different it's more even both ends so again I'm just going to follow that curve that one's not quite as good but It'll be fine. I'll go and iron it all down. I'm not going to show you doing that because I don't know where to, don't know where to put the camera. But when it's when I've ironed it all and I'm starting to turn it over, I'll show you. And then I'm going to do um, the herringbone hem stitch, which if you want to see how to do that, if you have a look on my skirt video that I made all oh, by me about 18 months ago, I'll try and put something in the the thingy card there and I'll, I'll try and remember to put it in the description from a particular pattern so I think it even says what the pattern name is in it it's a tiered skirt but anyway I, I did that stitch in that okay I've just ironed down the curve I'm gonna start pinning it in place ready to just fold this over fortunately I can just fold it the hem's pretty even so I'll start on the other side as well on here and fold that down and try and keep these lines on their seam lines there and then with that end and that end I've just got to make the in-between bit fit and this is the reason why I'm hand sewing it because it's a curved hem if I did this on the machine which is what this dress was done before so can you see this puckering here there's like a extra like wedge bit of fabric there that's the difference between one side and the f of the fabric and the other and there not being enough stitch line to fit the ex excess in because this line of fabric here is wider than this line of fabric here and I personally that really annoys me on clothes so I would rather spend the next two hours or whatever it is hand <laughs> sewing this uh, to make it look perfect on the bottom you know there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with with doing stuff on the machine but some some stuff just just suits better doing it by hand you can get a, a better result 
in some times, although stitching it on the machine can seem like the quicker option it depends how many times you have to do it before it's right so for me it's just easier to sit and do this by hand and when I've finally finished the hem I'll show you the finished result so here we are it's finished it's back on Dottie here's the hem all hand stitched I'm actually really, really glad that I've just gone round again because it's given it a bit more structure. I don't know if you can see how it's hanging a bit better. So I've tried to get out as far as possible so you can see what it looks like. There's the, the back seam. You can't tell at all there was ever a problem. It's been completely restitched and then I've completely alleviated the problem by putting in a side panel. So I've taken out the problem area so that won't happen again which it would have done, it would have just kept happening just because of the, you know, the nature of fabric and wearing things as well so I'm actually really pleased with it and the more I look at it with the side panel on I honestly don't think anyone's going to go oh, she's had to let her dress out because she's got a big bum um, so I think it actually works really, really well and it gives a bit of, um, a bit of heft to the dress it's a bit more, you know, it's got a bit more structure to it and it's, it's really lovely and um, I'm really pleased with the way it's hanging and that's what it looks like. I actually think it looks really good. So you can see a little bit more down the side that the fabric's darker. And it shows quite a lot there when it's in, in shadow and sticking out and everything. But I don't think it's altered like the overall shape of the dress too much. I think it still looks like how I ordered it, which is really, really nice. So anyway, it's done. And in answer to my question, yep. <laughs> Yes, you can mend that. As always, thanks so much for continuing to support me and all your donations on Ko-fi. Even just watching the video all the way through is just brilliant. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. I'm hoping to spend more time doing uh, YouTube videos and things like that. Just take you along on my sewing journey. <laughs> but I'll see you again soon. Okay, bye.